So one of the important ideas in mathematics is known as a vector. And so let's say we start with some set S. And it really doesn't matter what it is. Uh, some possibilities. We might start with the set of real numbers. Uh, when there's an infinite number of elements in this set, uh, we might take a set of uh, the set of colors that a computer can display, and there's a few million elements in this set. Or we might take the set of trustworthy politicians. Now, this, in order for us to actually have anything to talk about, we need to make sure that this set that we're talking about is actually non-empty. So this may not actually be a viable set. So a vector is an ordered list, also known as a tuple, of the elements of S. So, for example, we might take a four tuple of colors. That's four colors in a very specific order, and so maybe that order will be R, red, G, green, blue, and then red. Uh, we might take a five tuple of integers. That's five integers, and we're going to choose those integers in some particular color, uh, in some particular order. So minus one, two, five, negative one, and four. And then we may take a three tuple of trustworthy politicians. Well, I can't think of any. Presumably they exist. So a little bit about the anatomy of a vector. We often designate vectors using either a boldface type or we draw an arrow over the name of the vector. So we might talk about the vector V in caps or the vector A with an arrow over it. Typically in print you see the boldface notation, but because it's hard to write boldface on a board, uh, we often see we often write it when presenting it with the arrow over top. The components of the vector are usually going to be indicated by adding a subscript to indicate their places within the vector. So we might talk about the vector v, and that's going to be the components v1, v2, v3, and so on, up to vn, where v subscript tells you that this is the first component, second component, third component, and so on. Now for most of this course, we're going to be focusing on vectors whose components are drawn from the real numbers. And so if our components are n-tuples, that's sets of ordered sets of n real numbers, we say that the vector is in Rn. That's the real numbers, that's the Cartesian product of n factors of the real numbers. And so for example, we might take the vector 1, 2, minus pi, and that is a Let's see, 1, 2, that is a 3-tuple. In other words, this is a vector in R3. So here's a useful idea, which is the interconnection between geometry and algebra. It is very, 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 it is extremely helpful to be able to navigate between an algebraic and a geometric interpretation of a mathematical object. So for vectors in Rn, well, on the one hand, we could look at them algebraically. A vector is an n-tuple of components, each of which belongs to the set of real numbers. So this is an ordered set, v1 through vn. And geometrically, well, how might we look at this? Well, the thing to notice is that when we describe a vector, it looks an awful lot like how we describe a point. So this looks like it's a point in Rn. However, if we want to make the most use out of this interconnectivity, uh, we might notice that we already have points. So what we'd like is the vector should be something that is different from a point because we already have points. So what can we do? Well, let's think about this. The coordinates of a point tell us two things of importance. They tell us where the point is, but they also give us directions for getting to the point from the origin. And so what this suggests is that we can get value added by introducing vectors by making direction the important thing about a vector. And we can draw these directions, we can indicate them as arrows. So I'm going from here to there, and so here's my vector, u, and likewise from here to there, or here to there, and so on. Now something that's useful, if we're going to interpret vectors as directions, then, well, this vector u here and this vector r here, they look very similar. They are, seem to be giving the same directions. Go that away, go that away. And so we might say that u and r are going to be the same vector. The spatial position of the vector is not important. Where we happen to draw the vector doesn't matter. At the same time, if we viewed vectors as directions, p and q have to be regarded as different. p goes this way, 
goes that way, even though in many ways these two look very similar, they're going in different directions, so we have to regard them as different vectors. And, well, here's a interesting case here. This vector r and this vector s do appear to be going in the same direction, but they're drawn a little bit differently, and so there's a similarity between those two vectors, uh, but they're not the same vector. And we'll talk a little bit more about why these are different and how we can distinguish between the two of them. So, more generally, if I have two points p and q, I can designate the vector p, q with an arrow over it as the vector giving the directions from this point p to this point q. So, for example, let's take the vector going from the point p to the point q, and let's find both p, q and q, p. So, let's think about that. Vectors are directions. So, if I go from p to q, what has to happen? Well, let's look at our coordinates. So our coordinates of p, 1, 3, negative 1. Our coordinates of q, 0, negative 3, 2. And what do I have to do? Well, if I'm going from p to q, the first coordinate has to go from 1 to 0. It has to be decreased by 1 unit. My second coordinate has to go from 3 to negative 3, which means I have to decrease the second coordinate by 6 units. And then that third coordinate goes from negative 1 to 2. It's got to increase that third coordinate by 3 units. And what this suggests is that this vector from p to q has to be negative 1, that's my decrease of 1 unit, plus 6, negative 6, that's my decrease by 6 units, and then plus 3, that's my increase by 3 units. Now I can do the same analysis to find the vector qp, but I could also just simply reverse the directions. If this is how I go from p to q, if I reverse what I do, then I can go from q back to p. So instead of decreasing my first coordinate by 1 unit, I want to increase it by 1. Instead of decreasing by 6, I want to increase by 6. Instead of increasing by 3, I want to decrease by 3. And that suggests that my vector should be increase of 1, increase of 6, decrease of 3, 1, 6, negative 3. And we'll close with one final idea. What happens if I want to go from q to q? In other words, from a point to itself. Well, we would change none of the coordinates, so this would be a vector consisting of all the zeros. And this is actually a useful idea for later on. This gives us what we call the zero vector. And again, that's going to be no surprise zero with an arrow over it, or a boldface zero. And this is a vector whose components are all zero.